boys and girls, Mrs. Tori here, and I am so glad to be joining you today to learn about a new type of habitat. Now, a habitat is a place that provides food, water, and shelter to plants and animals. The other day you learned about the Arctic habitat, and today we're going to be talking about the desert habitat. Let's take a look at this picture of the desert here. Now the desert is a place that is very dry and very hot. We are going to be talking about a certain type of desert today called the Sonoran Desert. And the Sonoran Desert is located in the northwestern part of Mexico in the southwestern part of the United States, this little yellow part right here. Now before we get started, let's talk about some vocabulary words that you're going to hear while we are reading today. The first vocabulary word that we're going to talk about is camouflage. And camouflage means to blend in. Nocturnal, animals that come out at night or plants that appear at night. This is a very fancy word. It is called crepuscular and animals that come out just before the sun is coming up or just after the sun has set are crepuscular. And you might see animals that are nocturnal and crepuscular in the desert because it is very hot there. And it's very difficult for animals to be out in that hot desert sun during the day. A scavenger is an animal that eats things that are left behind by other animals. A carnivore is a meat eater. An herbivore is a plant eater. And an omnivore is both a plant and animal eater. So while we are reading today, we're going to listen for animals and we're going to categorize them. Are they carnivores, herbivores, or omnivores? Let's get started. After nearly freezing and almost becoming a polar bear snack in the Arctic, I, oh, here he is, Rattenborough. I, Rattenborough, thought we should go someplace where my whiskers and tail could thaw out and warm up. So I brought you to the desert. There are many deserts all over the world, and you know you're in a desert when it doesn't rain very much. Many deserts can also be very hot. Because it is so hot and dry, only certain types of animals and plants can live there. Welcome to the Sonoran Desert in the southwestern part of the United States and northwestern part of Mexico. The temperature is quite hot during the day and it doesn't rain very much. The heat and lack of rain make it hard for plants and animals to live in the desert. They must be specially adapted to living in the hot weather and survive with very little rain. How do they do it? Some plants save and store water inside their plant parts when it does rain. Other plants only grow in shady areas near mountains or rocks. Because there are very few plants that can be used as shelter, the animals have adapted to living in the desert often seek shelter underground and make their homes living under the sand. Living underground helps them stay cool when it gets hot and keeps them hidden from other animals that may want to eat them for lunch. Ouch! What did I walk into? Here is a plant that lives in the Sonoran Desert. The saguaro cactus is the world's largest cactus. Cacti don't have leaves, they have prickly spines instead, which is exactly why it hurts so much to touch this one. The incredible saguaro lives for up to 200 years, and in that time it can grow as high as a house and can weigh as much as several cars. The most amazing thing about the saguaro is that it is a habitat in itself. That's right, not only does it manage to live and thrive in the desert habitat just by being there, but 
It provides food, water, and shelter to many different kinds of animals. Let me get my climbing gear out and some gloves to protect my hands from these sharp spines and I'll meet you at the top. You already know that it hardly ever rains in the desert, but when it does, the saguaro cactus saves and stores large quantities of water in its roots and stems. The cactus saves the extra water and uses it to survive during those times when it is very dry and does not rain. In the spring, white flowers grow on the saguaro. At night, when the desert cools down, these flowers open to show sweet nectar, which butterflies, bats, and birds feed on before the flowers close the next day when it once again becomes too hot. In the summer, red fruit begins to grow on the saguaro. Many animals eat the fruit of the cactus. Here is an interesting bird called the Gila woodpecker. The Gila pecks holes into the soft cactus with its beak and makes a nest for its eggs. So it lays its eggs inside that little hole in the cactus. The Gila woodpecker is an omnivore. An omnivore is an animal that eats plants as well as other animals. So we're going to go over to our chart here and a Gila woodpecker is an omnivore. And we know that an omnivore is an animal that eats plants and other animals. Gila's feed on cactus fruit, berries, as well as insects that have invaded the saguaro. Thankfully, I brought my sandwich so I won't have to join these Gila's for a buggy lunch. It really is way too hot for a regular rat like me to live here. I'm glad I brought my fan with me. Interestingly enough, this Gila woodpecker can live in the desert habitat because their feathers help protect them from the hot desert sun by trapping cool air next to their skin. Still, most birds only go out to feed in the early morning or evening when it's cooler outside. So because these animals only come out in the early morning before the sun comes up or before or right after the sun goes down, we call a Gila woodpecker is a crepuscular animal. From noon to late afternoon, many of these birds seek shelter in the holes that they have dug in the cactus or other shady places. Here is another bird that makes its home in the saguaro cactus, the elf owl. The elf owl is the world's smallest owl. It's only about five, inch, five inches long, which is just bigger than one of your hands. Go ahead and hold your hand up right now. And that's about the size of the elf owl. The elf owl moves into those holes. So remember that hole that we saw that the Gila woodpecker makes in the tree? So this little elf owl moves into that hole that the, that the Gila woodpecker has made. Like most owls, the elf owl is nocturnal, which means that it rests during the day and it wakes at night to hunt for food. So remember earlier we talked about nocturnal? The elf owl is nocturnal. The elf owl is also a carnivore. Remember we talked about that word too? A carnivore is a meat eater. So I'm going to write elf owl under carnivore because a carnivore is a meat eater. It uses its large eyes to hunt in the dark night for bugs that live in the desert. Most owls eat mice, and I'm glad to say rat, and I'm sad to say rats, but I think I'm safe from the elf owl because I, as Rattenboro, am bigger than it is. Oh, look, here comes another animal, the desert cottontail. 
lives in the Sonoran Desert. It looks a little like the Arctic hare that we saw the other day in the tundra, but it has bigger and larger ears and longer back legs. The desert cottontail is an herbivore. Think to yourself, can you remember what is an herbivore? If you said a plant eater, you are right. And I'm going to write desert cottontail right here. Herbivores are animals that eat only plants and no animals. The desert cottontail eats grass and even cacti. Smaller animals like the desert cottontail always need to watch out for larger animals in the desert that may want to eat them. Many animals and plants are part of the cycle called the food chain. You will learn more about the food chain in the next read aloud. Coyotes, for instance, like to eat rabbits. In fact, there's a coyote coming this way. So let's stay up here and watch for it. So we just were talking a minute ago about the desert cottontail and that rabbit has really, really large ears to let some of that heat out to help keep it cool. Here's the coyote. Coyotes are found all over the United States, including the Sonoran Desert. And as you can see, the coyote has light tan colored coat to help it reflect the sun's rays. So the lighter the coat is, or the lighter a material is, it will reflect the rays. But the darker it is, it will absorb. And since we are in the desert right now where it is very hot, animals do not want to absorb the sun. They want to reflect as much sun as possible. So the coyote has adapted to living in the desert by having light fur that helps it reflect some of the sun's rays. And it also helps to camouflage it, which was one of the first words that we talked about. And camouflage means to blend in. And since the coyote has this light tannish colored fur, it's helping it blend in to that sand in the desert. Coyotes are carnivores. Think to yourself, what is a carnivore? If you said meat eater, good for you. So I'm going to go ahead and write coyote up here. And remember, we said the coyote likes to hunt rabbits. Coyotes are carnivores like the elf owl. They have a very good sense of smell, hearing, and vision. They can run very fast, which means that they are excellent hunters. They are also scavengers. Coyotes live in dens, which, makes, which they make by burrowing down into the ground. I think this one has smelled something because it's just run off. Now I'm getting down from this cactus before another coyote comes along to make me its dinner. It seems like rats are on the menu everywhere I go. Boys and girls, what I want you to do right now is I'm going to ask you some questions and I want you to think about them and think about what you heard in the read aloud and try and answer them the best way that you can. Go ahead and shout out the answers and then I will give you the answers and you can check to see if yours were correct. Describe the weather and temperature of the Sonoran Desert. I'll give you a minute to think about that. The Sonoran Desert is dry, hot, and there isn't much rain. So if you knew that answer, good for you. Do many plants and animals live in the desert? If you answered no, you are correct. Why not? The reason why not is because it is very hot and very dry. If you were going to give someone directions on how to prepare to spend time in the desert, what would you tell him or her to take for supplies? 
Think about that and share that with your family tonight. Thank you so much for joining me tonight for some information on the Sonoran Desert. And I know that you will be very excited to learn about our next habitat. See you soon.